You're listening to Encyclopedia Podcastica, a podcast from the Silicon Valley skeptics. Prepare your mind. Hello, everybody. My name is Hunter Perrin. And I'm Matt Courtney. And this is Encyclopedia Podcastica. Encyclopedia Podcastica is recorded in front of a live studio audience. (laughs) That is our wonderful studio audience. You know Matt. No, I don't. I put a CD in the microwave recently. Why would you do that? I wanted hot music. Oh, okay. That that makes sense. (laughs) I wanted to see what the CD would do in the microwave, and it was actually quite stunning. It's uh, electrifying. You get lots of sparks and and burning smell, and when you open the microwave, you get a headache for a while. Yeah. Uh, If you're going to do that at home, don't breathe in the fumes from the microwave. Yeah. How about how about if you're going to do that at home, don't. Just don't. We can. Like, I would well, yeah, say, fine. like, eight seconds max. So does that hurt your microfo- uh, microwave? Or I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> you're, the, you're the one who's supposed to be doing the tech side. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Probably. Yeah, you shouldn't do it. At least not for very long. <laughs> so uh, let's go into the history of microwave ovens. All right. The history. Well, well we've got to we step back a little bit. So microwaves. They're, they're actually a combination of two technologies, right? It's Micros an, and waves. Was that wrong? Ovens. Is that wrong? Oh, that's wrong. Ovens <laughs> and microwave <laughs> technology. <laughs> so you have a microwave oven, you got to throw both of them together. So there's two histories, one of ovens and one of microwaves. So ovens. I'm going to quickly go over that there's not a whole lot to the oven history because they pretty much were like invented and not much changes between like each iteration except what what the heat source is. But the first, how how old do you think the the oven is? Any guesses? A few thousand years, maybe. Guesses from the audience? Anybody? Anybody? Seven hundred and fifteen years. No, Probably older actually, than that. Uh, I think everybody was wrong. Like the oldest known oven, twenty nine thousand BC. Whoa, yeah, that is a very old oven. Very it, old it, one. It, and is it basically still, is it still in use? No, no, it's not. Darn. <laughs> so basically, what <laughs> what what people? <laughs> it was not easy bag. It was really really apparently it was a difficult. Hard bake oven. <laughs> <laughs> very difficult. Uh, basically, what it was was a big fire pit which is not entirely an oven because you have to have like some enclosed chamber right so so what they did was they built a yurt on top of it what is a yurt exactly a yurt is it's kind of a type of tent uh but basically it's like a basically has like a big circular wall in it and then there's like a conical top to it sort of like a teepee on top of a circular wall kind of thing uh, it's very old style. It's all pro- you know, probably covered with some sort of animal skin, uh, with with wood to support it or something like that. So, basically, had a big pit, fire pit, put that on top, and this is pretty big. So, what do you think that they actually cooked in this giant yurt oven? If it's that big, I'm gonna guess like buffalo. an entire cow or buffalo, cow, or maybe buffalo. people. Was it people? It was not people. Oh. Elk <laughs> deer. <laughs> that's pretty close. Donuts. Yeah. No, it wasn't donuts. They had, as far <laughs> as I know, they had not been invented yet. It was actually mammoth. Oh, they found mammoth bones in this uh, prehistoric uh, oven. That is quite the oven. That that is a very big oven. So, yeah, basically, um, yeah. After that, I mean, the only thing that really changed it changed kind of how they they build it. But most most important thing was the heat sources. You know, started off with basically wood, uh, moved to coal, gas, electric, and finally, what we're interested in, microwave. It's actually the most recent version of an oven, most recent heat source for an oven. So It was never nuclear? I don't think there are any nuclear <laughs> ovens, except really hot. You probably don't want to eat the stuff that comes out of a nuclear oven. It might be like I'm sure it would be delicious for like maybe a couple months couple months and then it would start to feel a little tumory depends on the the half-life 
of the radioact. <laughs> no, no. So a microwave. So for a microwave oven, you got to have microwaves. And how do you make microwaves? A teensy tiny wave machine. Yes. Yeah, for for ants. For no. What they like <laughs> to ride. <laughs> <laughs> No, so you need, you need a magnetron. That's what uh, what generates a, what now? a magnetron. 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 Can I be honest? That sounds like something a supervillain would make. Yes, it, it does, doesn't it? It is I, Microwave Man, and I have constructed the world's largest magnetron above this city, <laughs> and I will use this magnetron to cook the entire city. No. No, Microwave Man, for I will stop you. I am oh, Fork no. Man. It's Convection Oven Man. <laughs> oh. Be gone with you, Convection Oven Man. <laughs> okay, I am done with that. I thought you were going to go with Fork or something that you're not supposed to put in a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better. Yeah. <laughs> but Fork Man kind of sounds a little <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Hello, it is me, Scissor Man. It is I, Crumpled Up Tin Foil Man. No! Guess what my superpower is? Uh, I prevent foods from spoiling. I can be crumpled up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyways, Magnetron, invented by Albert Hull, 1921, was not actually trying to make something that generates microwaves. That was actually... Uh, determined later that it actually did that. Um, but the original magnetron was uh, pretty low efficiency. When they figured out that it was making microwaves, there, there were some adjustments, but they really couldn't get it very efficient. It wasn't making very good microwaves. It really doesn't work for a microwave oven. Not that they were going in that direction. <laughs> the, the real problem was they were trying to make uh, microwaves for radar. That's the original intent for making microwaves. So, uh, so how come we don't call it a radar oven? Uh, we kind of do, but I'll get to that. <laughs> well, we don't anymore, but it used to be kind of called that. This uh, is my radar oven. Yeah. I use it to cook planes. <laughs> <laughs> when they come in too close, you just Delicious like planes. shoot it and yeah. Um, so later, uh, Sir John Turton Randall and a team of British co-workers, they wanted to uh, make a, a more effective magnetron. And they, between 1937 and 1940, they developed the cavity magnetron. It's not a magnetron that has a sore tooth. Ding. Okay, that but was, I'm... okay. I was expecting crickets Boy. on that one. There we go. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so it was creative, yeah, the, for radar. Um, prototype was created in 1940. Um, and they, so these were, uh, it was invented at the University of Birmingham uh, in the UK. So this was actually British invention. Um, it was during World War II. They ended up selling it to the US uh, for support. Uh, to the British for sold the patent for a magnetron or uh well I don't think they it wasn't I think it was a top secret like sold the, thing the so they, they actually magnetron. yeah sold the plans to the US are you sure this isn't a super villain's tool it does sound like it doesn't it? <laughs> it's super villain to defeat the Nazis what <laughs> anti Nazi man and okay he seems like he'd be a good guy though ally man ally man is it basically Captain America? Not to be confused with Alloy Man, which is the mixture of two metal men. <laughs> okay. We can cut all this out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one doing the editing, so <laughs> have fun. I feel bad since that ant joke. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to make okay, jokes. Gonna... It's fine. Um, so now we have we we can make microwaves, which is great. But we're using them. That is for, useful for a microwave for oven. Radar, which is not useful for a microwave oven, if you're like radaring things and not not cooking things. So, what if you want to tell how far the food is from the side of the microwave? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that worked too well because it doesn't reflect the microwaves; it absorbs oh. it. So, good point. Yeah, that wouldn't really really work. 
tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so finally, this guy named Piercy Spencer, he's sitting there like working on his radar, messing around with it, getting kind of hungry, uh, reaches down in his po- pocket to pull out a candy bar. I'm not actually sure, but I think it was a Mr. Good bar. Not positive that's, that's on that. That's important to note. But that is very important. Well, he pulls out this candy bar. Not a freaking Hershey bar. Not a Hershey bar. They've never been used for scientific discovery. That's right. That's right. Facts. But a Miss... Okay. Wait, wait. Oh, that's oh, okay. Okay. Are you sure it wasn't a Mr. Science bar? Wasn't a Mr. Science bar. I've never actually seen a Mr. Those Science bar. Those were discontinued bar. in 1929. Time, time to bring back the Mr. Science bar. Noted. Anyways, this Mr. Good bar pulled it out of his pocket, was melted. It's completely melted. And he's like, wait a second. What's going on here? So, Direct quote. What? Direct, Direct quote. quote. Yes, that was exactly what it is. <laughs> With the like finger on the chin and everything. That's, it was exactly I'm sure the, the listeners <laughs> will. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll that's why that. he said it. So people could, you know, <laughs> the listeners knew about it. Anyways, uh, so he's like, wait a second. Is this a microwaves making uh, my, my candy bar melt? Um, so they started doing some, some Or am I just started... that hot? Yes. <laughs> well, he was a scientist, so he clearly wasn't that. <laughs> Are you saying scientists can't be hot? No. Hello, lady. <laughs> I have met quite a few hot scientists. Oh, okay. I'll have you know. And Good also night. quite a few ugly ones. <laughs> right. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ooh. Oh, wait, is that which way you're going with him? He's hot. Oh, okay. Richard Dawkins, not hot. No. <laughs> it's hot or not, science style. <laughs> we are terrible. Yes. We love you, Richard Dawkins. You're amazing. Richard Darwin, what's with the beard? Shave it off, you. Richard unstyled. Darwin? Richard Darwin. You mean yeah. Charles Darwin? <laughs> Get your scientists right. (laughs) Charles Plank, what's your deal? (laughs) Anyways, so this guy, Percy, starts uh, experimenting with radar, with microwaves and his radar uh, to to try and actually uh, uh, heat up some food. So what, what do you think the first thing he tried to cook with microwaves. If he was yes. anything like me, it was a CD. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's nothing like you. French, French fries. Some kind of meat? Baked beans. French fries. No, no. none. An airplane. All of you are wrong. It was actually popcorn. Ooh. Obvious, right? The, the second food cooked was, uh, was an egg. Which is important because apparently it exploded in the face of one of the experimenters immediately afterwards. Nice. Did he survive? Space, he say. did. No, hey. oh. <laughs> he did survive. That's good. Yes, <laughs> he survived. Just with egg shrapnel. <laughs> egg shrapnel. It was. It was kind of dicey there for a little bit, but then he wiped so the egg off his face shelled. and he was good. That one was one would one would describe his his composure after that accident as scrambled. Or shell shock. But he was still positive. You could say he had a sunny side up outlook. Okay, enough yokes about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so that you don't really have a microwave, right? And if you're just sending, you don't have a microwave oven. If you're just sending microwaves at food, the other thing you need to really have is. Would you call it a microwave gun? You probably could. He had a microwave gun. Are you sure this guy wasn't a supervillain? He is sounding more and more like a supervillain who well, wants to know. cook the world's like, popcorn. Yeah, he seems kind of like a hero to like bachelors everywhere inventing the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> he found out later, like through the experimentation, if he actually put the food in a metal box and shot microwaves into the box, it amplified the strength of the microwaves and cook the food better. So finally, we have an actual microwave oven. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So in 1945, the first microwave oven was uh, used. Uh, that was, I would say commercially, it was actually in a, a Boston restaurant, but it was really mostly just uh, testing it out. Uh, but 1947, the first microwave was available for use 
by the public. This is not like actually in your home, but it was a apparently a speedy weenie vending machine. Speedy in, weenie. Speedy weenie in Grand Central Central Station. New That's York. the best name I've ever heard of a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess what it uh, what it made? What it I'm going to guess hot dogs. Hot yes, dogs. very good. <laughs> Sizzling delicious hot dogs. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, then we have the first commercially available microwave, which was called the Radar Range. Radar, Radar Range. Range. So there, there's your name for Radaring it. Radaring your food. Radaring your fa- food. Uh, it was 1947 also. It was 5 feet 11 inches high. <laughs> Good Lord. Weighed 750 pounds. <laughs> and That's cost, taller than wait, most wait, people. And weighs more than most people. Yes. Which yes. I wish it weighed more than all people, but some people. Yeah, yeah some people are a little, a little larger. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it cost at the time five thousand dollars. Which that cost less than most people. Well, I <laughs> except in in nineteen forty seven dollars, if you convert it to current dollars, that's about fifty two thousand dollars. I don't know how much people cost actually. I, I don't know. A uh, typical person, uh, 20, 25 grand, maybe 30. <laughs> I don't want to know how you know that. Long story. Uh, the first countertop microwave oven, 1967, Amana Corporation. And then finally, we have our beloved microwave oven. Two years before we landed on the moon. Yes, that was really important. Indeed. If we, if they, we need, didn't, they need to cook like, their food on the moon. That's right. So, they clearly use microwaves. I don't actually obviously. know what they used. To they did not food. use microwaves. I don't think they cooked their food so on the moon. Okay. Food, right? yeah. all, they just freeze dry. Okay. Okay, fair enough. A uh, little statistics. In 1971, only 1% of households had a microwave oven. So that's four sense. years after. <laughs> By 1986, 25% um, in the U.S., and by 1997, it was 90%. Uh, today, it's around 95%, and kind of it's kind of leveled off, maybe going down a little bit. Uh, Do you think the other five percent don't want microwaves, or yeah, they just use like conventional ovens, I guess. And, hmm. I don't know, because you know microwave ovens are bad for you. Which <laughs> we're, we're gonna we will get to that. We'll get to that. So. <laughs> Moving on, that's the history of microwave ovens. Woo! All right, so let's talk about how they work. So the fundamentals of a microwave oven. You have electromagnetic waves, specifically microwaves, which on the scale of electromagnetic waves, you From have awesome visible light, awesome. which is the ones that we can see, the, the classic colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Uh, then... <laughs> <laughs> then above visible light, meaning more energy or a smaller wavelength, so light that that is measured in wavelengths of nanometers, uh, we have ultraviolet light. That's the kind that will burn your skin on a hot, sunny day. It makes uh, stuff or a cold, glow, sunny day. like cool when you're in like a darkened yep, black area. Black lights. Yeah. Use ultraviolet to make fluorescent things glow uh we have x-rays those are extremely useful for seeing your broken bones or just generally seeing inside you i'm giving you cancer x-rays can give you cancer yes they are the kind that can give you cancer uh then gamma rays which are better at giving will give you cancer (laughs) (laughs) yeah don't get exposed to gamma rays uh, they will not turn you into a superhero. No. They will turn you into Cancer Man. Dead guy. Yep. So then uh, less energy than visible light, uh, meaning a, a larger wavelength. So uh, waves that are measured in uh, centimeters, meters, even kilometers. We have infrared, uh, which is what us humans actually output. Which is why when you mm. look through infrared goggles, you can see people. So we're glowing. So we're like light bulbs. We are, just not with visible light. Okay. Only infrared light. Uh, then we have our microwaves, 
which is what we will be talking about. And then below so, microwaves, we have radio waves, which wait, is how, what carries how big our are sound. The, the microwaves? Microwaves range from about one meter to about one millimeter. Okay. So, so from like, this is really not going to work on a podcast. But this <laughs> from like the size of like size, a, a large size. person's arm to right. like the size of an ant. Right. You know, it's from rather large to rather small. Uh, and the microwaves that your microwave oven uses are at 2.45 gigahertz. Okay. Which may sound familiar if you've set up a Wi-Fi router, because Wi-Fi routers use 2.4 gigahertz. Isn't that, isn't that a problem? It would be if your microwave or if your Wi-Fi router were outputting as much as a microwave does. But your Wi-Fi outputs maybe 80 to a few hundred milliwatts of power. Your microwave right. outputs around 700 watts of power. Well, wouldn't that mean that when your microwave is running, you won't have Wi-Fi? Uh, your microwave keeps that's all was... of those microwaves in oh, okay. the, the box, but it, okay. it can interfere with Wi-Fi okay. if like, you have your Wi-Fi router inside your microwave. <laughs> so so don't, don't do that. Don't microwave your Wi-Fi <laughs> router. Okay. Uh, so you could have a problem if you were sitting in a room with um, several thousand Wi-Fi routers all around you. Okay. Uh, sitting inside a metal room with thousands of Wi-Fi routers, you may actually cook yourself, which would be bad. Uh, so the waves that a microwave produces oscillate at 2.45 billion times per second. Is that what gigahertz means? That is, yes. Okay. One hertz is one oscillation per second, uh, and a gigahertz is a billion oscillations per second. So 2.45 gigahertz is 2.45 billion oscillations per second. And what that means is it's uh, transitioning from uh, side to side on the positive, negative. The magnetic field that it produces is transitioning from, from positive to negative charge, ah. uh, which is important uh, for reasons I will get into in a second. So the radar actually uses a, a pulse of microwaves whereas your microwave produces a constant stream of microwaves uh, and they will pass through most materials without interacting with them uh, okay. materials like glass they'll pass right through most plastics they'll pass through uh, some plastics you actually can't put in the microwave uh, because the microwaves will interact with them and heat them up and right but they they're usually like plastic marked, all over. Like... Yeah, they'll usually be marked not microwave safe. Okay. So the reason we want our microwaves oscillating between positive and negative um, is because we use that on bipolar molecules to heat up our food. So what happens is you have this okay. a molecule like water where uh, the electronegativity of the molecule is different on one side than the other side. And what that means is basically all of the electrons kind of clump together on one side. So oxygen right. is a really hungry atom for electrons. It really wants to keep all its electrons to itself. And hydrogen is kind of weak. It's just like, yeah, you can take my, my electrons. Go ahead. So on H2O, uh, the, the construction of an H2O molecule or the, the shape of it, you'll have one oxygen so, atom and then sticking off the side of the oxygen atom is a is a hydrogen atom and then sticking off the other side at about 90 degrees a little more i believe than 90 degrees is another hydrogen atom so you have this large so it area looks like looks like you know mickey mouse ears yeah, yeah 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 so you have this large area where it's the oxygen molecule or oxygen atom that is hoarding all the electrons and that side of the molecule is very negatively charged okay. and the side with the hydrogen atoms on it uh, tends to be much weaker in trying to hold on to its electrons. So it's generally more positively charged. That's why we like uh, hydrogen better. Cause it's more positive. <laughs> no. So <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody else is making jokes. Come on. <laughs> it's tough material to make yeah. jokes to. <laughs> So you have these molecules like water um, 
and fats are also bipolar, uh, meaning they, they have a positively charged side and a negatively charged side, and sugars are also bipolar. Um, so when these microwaves pass through them and they're oscillating between positive and negative charge, the atom will try to align itself with this wave. It will tumble back and forth, and that motion causes friction when it bumps into other molecules. And that is what actually heats your food. It's not the microwave itself. It's the motion of the molecules that the microwaves cause. So it's not magic. It is not magic. <laughs> it's science. It's science. And, and friction. Friction is science. Okay. <laughs> I guess. So, so metal in the microwave. Is it a good idea? Well, I think we just we already no. discussed this. <laughs> it is it is not a good idea. Not good. Metal metal in the microwave is not a good idea, most of the time. Uh, so what happens with when you put metal in the microwave is, if it has sharp corners and long edges, unlike the walls of the microwave, which are flat uh, and thick, because totally the microwave right. is made of metal. It's made of but metal, but it's it's big, flat, thick pieces of metal. Uh, something like a fork is not big, flat, and thick. It is Tined. small. It's got these tines that come to sharp points. It's very bad in the microwave. And also crumpled up foil is the same thing. Uh, so what happens when you put metal like that into a microwave is it will build up an electric charge along these right. edges and, it's and corners. Because it's actually moving the electrons in. Yeah, it's uh, when yeah. you create a, a magnetic field that oscillates that will generate an electric field in an electric current in any metal um, and that electric current when it's in a small pointed object like a fork it has nowhere to go it's going to bunch up or it's going to gather at the the corners at the the edge of the tines which is why when you put a fork in the microwave you'll see sparks coming off the the, the corners of the tines okay um and what causes those sparks is when the charge reaches what's called the dielectric breakdown strength of air, uh, which is around three kilovolts per millimeter. So that's basically the point at which there's enough electricity to jump like, across the air. Uh, yeah. So what happens much. is it will ionize the air, Ooh, which means it strips ions. the electrons off of it. The air becomes charged charged ions and electricity can pass through it and it will cause it to arc. You'll see those big electric arcs, right. uh, which so can that, be bad because they will search for the closest path to allow them to discharge. And sometimes that path can be into the wall of your microwave, which can burn out your electronic components in the microwave. It can actually burn the microwave itself or it can cause a fire, which could burn your kitchen down. So metal in the microwave is not a good idea. Wow. Except if it's done right. Sometimes you can put metal in the microwave. But you really so, shouldn't. So, well, you shouldn't put just any old metal in the microwave. If it's designed to go in the microwave, you should put it in. So okay. if you cook like a Hot Pocket or one of those pizza, those little personal pizzas, sometimes they have this metal foil on the container that you put into the microwave. That metal foil uses that effect of the metal heating up. Uh, basically, the metal becomes a heating element when it's uh, bathed in these microwaves. And that heating action will heat the air next to it, which will in turn heat your food. And that's how you can use microwaves to crisp the, the food or cause a, a crust on your food. Ah. Um, which, in that case, your food is technically being cooked through conduction rather than the normal way a microwave cooks food, which is uh, oscillating these water molecules and causing They don't that, have a fancy friction. name for it? Uh, microwave. Okay. <laughs> microwave cooking. So your microwave has several different parts, which all work together to cook your food. It's got the controller which is hooked up to the input panel, which it's is where guy, you... Just a guy sitting there with a whip, right? You just... <laughs> it is electronic. No, oh, okay. no whips involved. No. So your, your controller actually controls all of the parts of your microwave, makes sure that your microwave 
works. Uh, then it's got a, several safety mechanisms, which are actually uh, required by U.S. Is, law. Is one of them and a I'm word? Sure law. Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> All over the world. Uh, So one of your safety mechanisms is a line fuse that just, if you get a a surge, it'll blow. So your microwave regular fuse, right? Yeah, Yeah, just just a fuse. Uh, Another safety mechanism is the cavity thermostat, which is a thermostat inside the the, uh, cavity of the microwave. Which will so when you're talking about inside like act the actual box or inside the magnetron? not in the box but accessible to the box. There's an opening okay. that the air can pass through to to let the thermostat know uh, what temperature the box is. Okay. So that means like uh, if your food is getting too hot and the microwave can detect it, it will turn off the the magnetron and stop producing right. microwaves. We, it also we, has a, a. We didn't really talk about it, but the, there's a, even though it's a box, they do have holes in it to do stuff like let some air out. Yeah, they have because vent it, holes. Because you're heating and, up something, it's going to yeah. expand. You want to be able to, you don't want it totally sealed off. So that's where they they have some of this stuff. Is it has vent vents. holes and holes so the the thermostat can access the right. the, the air. Right. Um, it also has a door switch, which. Is pretty self-explanatory. If you open the door, the microwaves turn off, right? Because you don't want to cook yourself, right? But if you do, you can just take a fork and put it in the door switch. And... <laughs> don't do, but that. don't do that. Really. Do not do that. I was gonna yeah. ask that question actually. Definitely don't do that. Yeah. Uh, so the electricity flows into a high voltage transformer, which takes your regular household current and transforms it up to several thousand volts your household current is around 120 volts in america um in the u.s and i believe it's 110 in europe and other parts of the world is that right 220 220 apparently the audience is smarter than us (laughs) (laughs) So uh, your household voltage is not enough to power the the magnetron. So this high voltage transformer will up the voltage to a very dangerous level if if you're touching. That increases it. that increases the voltage, but it but lowers it, the amperage. But it lowers the amperage. Yeah, right. To come, well. but it's still dangerous. Yes, it can kill you, uh, especially since that goes uh that high voltage then goes into a a high voltage capacitor and that capacitor is the deadliest part of your microwave do not has a knife does that have a knife (laughs) it might as well (laughs) it doesn't like people it will kill you it can (laughs) and will kill you don't touch it okay it can even kill you after you unplug the microwave because capacitors hold on to charge they're kind of like batteries they're different, but they're kind of like batteries in that they can hold a charge, but they will discharge their charge all at once. So if you touch the capacitor in your microwave, you will die. Okay. If it's charged up and you touch it, you die. Okay. No touching the capacitor. <laughs> uh, so then that, that electricity then flows into a magnetron, which is the heart of the microwave. The magnetron is what actually emits... And it loves your food because it's the heart of the... No, okay. Love, love, love. It's terrible. So the magnetron will emit radio waves called microwaves. They're specific frequency called microwaves, uh, which will heat up your food. And the way the magnetron works is it has a, a little metal filament that heats up and releases electrons. And they would normally shoot off in one direction. Like the uh, band. <laughs> Woo! I love them. They would normally shoot off, but instead there's a, a big magnet around the outside of the, the magnetron that causes these electrons to spin around instead of just shooting off. And they spin around inside the vacuum chamber of this magnetron the cavity of the yes. magnetron okay yeah it's a vacuum so it, they take all the air out uh the electrons spin around this vacuum chamber vacuum uh cavity and they spin past these 
smaller cavities inside of that that anode vacuum cavity uh, called resonant cavities. These, if you look at it, if you look at a, a cross section of it, it looks kind of like the spokes of a bicycle, uh, but there's they're open towards the hub, the the filament, um, and the electrons will spin past them and resonate with them. So resonance, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's like uh, if you imagine a boxer hitting one of those speed punching bags, uh, he's resonating with it, meaning he hits it and gives it power at just the right time to keep it going in this, in this uh, constructive feedback loop. And that's what the electrons spinning around do to these uh, resonant cavities. They, they will boxers. cause... They will cause the electrons inside the cavities to spin at a specific frequency, and that will generate electric fields at 2.45 gigahertz. Ooh. So then a small rod connects to one of the veins of the anode, one of those spoke-like things, which is used to output the microwaves into what's called a waveguide. So, so now we're this... out of the, ma the magnetron, and instead of flowing electricity, we're now flowing electromagnetic waves. So this guide just, like, walks around, shows the waves around, like, here, here's, the, here's the food, you know. Here's <laughs> the control panel. Is, yeah, here's the, the controller. Uh, Hopefully the microwaves aren't getting to the control panel. <laughs> It'd probably not be good. The guide will keep them from getting to the control panel or any other bad part of the microwave that they shouldn't be in. Uh, you, need so this to, wave you need a badge guide. for that. <laughs> <laughs> this waveguide is a, a rectangular piece of metal that will guide the electron or the uh, electromagnetic waves, the microwaves, into the cavity. Um, sometimes before they enter the cavity, they hit a, a fan called a stirrer that doesn't actually blow air. It's not designed to blow air. It's designed to reflect the electromagnetic waves, the microwaves, in all different directions. And that will uh, heat up your food consistently. So that's the like the whirring sound that you hear when you start the microwave. Because otherwise uh, it like, could also be the cooling fan. Oh, okay. Because there's there's also a fan to cool the components of the microwave since they get hot. Okay. I was about and to say they, they shouldn't they have blow. a cooling fan for the mic because you're trying to heat stuff up. You want it. <laughs> You have a cooling fan so it's for, just the for the components. components itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you'll also have a turntable, which is the the piece of glass that you put your food on that spins it around. Um, and then you have the front grill. So the the grill or the mesh in the front has holes in it that are just small enough to keep microwaves from passing through. So you remember I was saying microwaves are about a millimeter to a meter long. Right. So, so at 2.45 gigahertz, that would be a specific size wave. Yes. You don't know what size that is, do you? Give me a second. <laughs> I don't know. So you multiply or divide, you know, you divide it by the speed of light to get the, the uh, length of the wave. It'll take speed of light divided by frequency. Oh, okay. Again, our audience is smarter than us. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Back to our program. So 2.45 gigahertz is about 12.2 centimeters okay. in length. So about a foot. No. Because <laughs> I'd be... Joke <laughs> no. No, 12 point... 12 that would be inches. That would be a lot smaller. Sorry. <laughs> I think we need to stick to either uh, metric or imperial and just okay. not try and convert. Okay, fine. You're on centimeters. <laughs> I have feet on my legs. We're going to be the start of the movement to, to push Americans to metric. 2.54 <laughs> centimeters per inch? That's right. Okay, yeah. Okay. So it's much smaller than a half, foot. Half a foot. So these holes are <laughs> these holes in the in the grill are small enough to keep the microwaves from passing through them, but big enough to allow visible light to pass through them, which, which is really why, small. They're like nanometers. Yeah, they're yeah. very very small. So and that's if you look why at you the can, grill, like it's it's they're really small. They're like a millimeter size yeah. if you yeah. look closely. Because really, when you're microwaving, if you want to get really close to your microwave and look, 
through and, <laughs> and see the grill. It, it doesn't bother your eyes at all. Like, okay. Anyways. It won't. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to hurt you. No, it probably would. It's just weird. So that's why you can look through the grill and see your food, but it doesn't cook your face. <laughs> Which is important. Which would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you wanted to eat your face. With some fava beans. Oh, God. <laughs> Cannibals. Don't forget the Chianti. Yeah. <laughs> so these vibrating water molecules create steam, which can help cook your food, but it will also cause bread to become soggy. Aww. So if you microwave bread, that's why it becomes soggy. The water in it becomes steam, which... There's not really much you can do about that. There is. Uh, There is. Yeah, if you have one of those metal... So you uh, put metal in your microwave and that would totally fix it. (laughs) Don't do that. (laughs) Put ones that are specifically designed for this. If you have one of those metal foil things, it will heat up and use conduction uh, heat transfer to, to give the bread a nice crust. Right. Uh, so your, your microwave only heats up your food, not the air, which is why without those metal things, it it can't crust or, or toast anything. Right. Um, it needs those little pieces of, uh, of metal in those little crisping sleeves. Um, and it also means you can touch the side of your microwave and you don't get burned. Unlike a regular oven where if you touch the side of your oven, don't touch that. You are going to get burned. It's going to be very painful. So microwaves are much safer than, than regular so when ovens. When you're cooking your mammoth, don't touch the, uh, <laughs> the yurt. <laughs> so in these uh, standing waves inside your, your microwave, you'll have what's called nodes and anti-nodes. So a, a node is where two waves uh, will cancel each other out. You have one wave that's positively charged and one wave that's negatively charged at this point and those two waves together will cancel each other out and you'll get no charge in that point Um, and as the waves oscillate the charges constantly cancel each other out which means at that point you get no microwave heating Ah. so if you just had a a big uh plate with a a bunch of food on it so like uh like a, a cheese like if you had cheese just spread out over that entire plate <laughs> and you you microwaved it if it wasn't turning you would get pockets of melty delicious cheese and pockets of gross cold cheese so that's why that turntable moves your food around it moves it through these nodes and these anti nodes and that's also why some microwaves have a stirrer that reflects the the microwaves into different patterns to move these nodes and anti-nodes around. And when they interfere with each other like that, where you have one positive and one negative, that's called destructive interference, and that destroys the wave. And then at an anti-node, you have constructive interference, which is both waves are positive or both waves are negative, and you get a very powerful wave at that point. So you get lots of microwave heating in that part. So many parts of your microwave are high voltage, which means you really shouldn't take it apart. Only professionals should take it apart because it can kill you. Like, yeah, like that capacitor, which we said is very mean and has a knife. (laughs) (laughs) It will, it can and will kill you. Right, right. Uh, But some parts of the microwave you can actually fix yourself um the fuse for example you could replace the fuse in your microwave i don't know you probably should know what you're doing before that but okay. also if you're if you're uh if the walls of your microwave get chipped or dirty uh they can cause arcing they can cause the electric arcing where you get this basically these, means sparks yeah not, you get these sparks like of electricity shooting off the walls of your microwave you can use what's called microwave interior paint to fix that you just paint over that section is this like special will, paint that yes it definitely does not have any metal in it or something it is very special paint that you need to I know buy we specifically for this we purpose. haven't talked about 
you know, paints yet, but some paints actually have or may have lead in them or other yeah, metals. Yeah, some paints will have metals, which means you really should not put them in your microwave. And you, you need specifically eat them microwave interior paint. And no eating the paint. Don't eat any paint. <laughs> Even if it's non-toxic, just don't eat it. It's not yeah. food. But it tastes so good. <laughs> it's not food. <laughs> so there are a lot of myths about microwaves, and I would like to dispel all of those myths right now. First of all, your microwave does not cook your food inside out. Yes. But that, that's kind of because the microwaves are heating the molecules like that's why people think it's inside out but yeah, it's not people, really they, well there it, there's a specific reason people might think that it's inside out is if you have an uneven distribution of these bipolar molecules uh, so say your your food has a lot of water content on the inside but not a lot of water content on the outside like maybe a, a pie with a very dry crust could have that if you're heating that it will get hotter on the inside faster than it gets hotter on the outside but if you take something that is just evenly distributed and put it in the microwave, it will heat from the outside in. It's because the microwaves penetrate the food from the outside. It's usually how penetrating works. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So your microwave cooks from the outside in. Second, they will not give you cancer. Aw. <laughs> no, wait, that's a good thing. <laughs> Microwaves are a type of radiation called non-ionizing radiation, which means they will not ionize the atoms in your DNA. They won't damage your DNA. Well, the only time they can dam damage your DNA is if they start to cook you. So, so don't let them cook you. Don't get in your microwave, don't, is what right, I'm saying. Right. It's, you shouldn't be inside the microwave. We haven't mentioned but this, but don't put anything alive in the yes, microwave. Yes, don't put your pets in the microwave. That's not don't a quick put way to dry them. Don't animals in the microwave. If it's still alive, don't put it in there. Yes. Afterwards, though. <laughs> well, your food is dead <laughs> animals. Whatever. Leslie, I'm going to miss you. You taste so um, Another myth, third myth to, to defeat here, is the... The myth that somehow breaking down food molecules makes them less nutritious, which is the opposite of the truth. So if you break down your food molecules, it makes them easier to digest, which makes them more nutritious, which, with a couple exceptions, like uh, certain vitamins. If you break them down, it does make them uh, less useful for your body. But in general... If you break down your food molecules, it makes them easier to digest, which makes them more nutritious. That's why which is like, actually the reason we cook things. Like this raw food diet is kind of bad. BS. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You All want right. to cook your food. Okay. It makes it more nutritious for you. So that will conclude our how or, how microwaves work section. Right. So we should talk about we should take questions first before we get to Waifu, since it's a totally different topic. Waifu? <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> yes. So do we have any questions from the audience? Um, are microwaves a subset of radio waves? Um, you, the, the terminology is kind of interchangeable. Microwaves can be called radio waves, but usually you would refer to them as microwaves to differentiate from... Uh, lower band radio waves like AM and FM. All right, are, the, are, are those longer waves? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, but they have a longer they wavelength. They cook stuff, the, the, the Mr. Science bar. Right? The, they can't cook anything. Um, it's a specific frequency that, yeah, that does specific it. Specific right? frequencies cook things. Uh, there are other frequencies that will cook things yeah. um, other than 2.45 gigahertz. Uh, the reason they chose 2.45 gigahertz is actually because... To generate the other frequencies that will cook things is usually more expensive uh, than 2.45 gigahertz. And also, 2.45 gigahertz is not a communication band. Except for Wi-Fi. Well, Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz. Okay. But it's kind of close. It's close, but yeah. still not the same. Isn't there like an issue with like Wi-Fi not being able to go through stuff that... As water, like if it's raining, it doesn't have as much. Uh, 
Uh, probably distance. I think it's the same reason because it's it it would be similar. absorbed yeah. by the water. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, not microwaves. So don't put your Wi-Fi router at the bottom of the pool. Right. That would not work. Yes. <laughs> For more reasons than just that. <laughs> Did you say the little sharp things on forks are called tines? Yes, those are called tines. I did not know that. <laughs> Completely unrelated to microwaves. Do we need to do an episode on forks? Yeah. Uh, that was a big question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, how come some plastics aren't safe for microwaves? What's, what's the deal? Uh, they have bipolar molecules. Oh, okay, so so not all plastics are the same. Some plastics, some contain metal, first of all. Yeah. Uh, but some have bipolar molecules and will thus be heated by the microwaves. If I took one of those, uh, you know, those pizzas with the metal foil, right? If I, if I cut it in advance before microwaving it, would it arc? Because now there's a sharp edge. Pizza or foil? The foil and the pizza. Not necessarily. Uh, the, the actually. Pizza, the pizza doesn't need to be involved. In actually, the some foods do arc. Like what? Like grapes. If you take a grape and cut it in half, uh, and microwave it, it can actually ionize the air and arc. Awesome. Why, why does it do that? Uh, <laughs> it builds up an electric charge that okay. reaches the... Uh, Is there like the iron, too much iron in that, grapes or something? The charge reaches the grape time. The grape time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it reaches the, the dielectric breakdown strength of air, even oh. even though it's food and not a metal. But yeah, some some so, foods can. So don't arc. microwave grapes, which I don't know why you'd want to do that. You can microwave grapes. Just uh, just put a container in... over it, so so oh, okay. it doesn't go up into your microwave. Oh, okay. It'll probably melt the container though. So put something that you don't mind will be melted, or something that's not going to melt. Maybe if why are you um, microwaving it's, grapes? To it's begin with? heated plasma air. It will probably melt whatever you put in there. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I don't remember where I recall this from, but like you could, you put a turkey, you can cook a turkey in a microwave. Is that is that is that possible? Is it going to heat evenly? Sure. You can yeah. cook a turkey in the microwave. Uh, it probably it will not taste good at all because it's not going to brown it. Either. Yeah. Right. Uh, the reason turkey tastes good when you cook it in the oven is it cooks the the skin. It cooks from the outside in, basically. It, cooks very slowly from the outside in so we the all skin... know microwaves cook from the inside out <laughs> <laughs> microwaves like just cook from discussed. the outside in but it cooks much faster from the outside faster in. what if i crumpled the oil around <laughs> <laughs> that might work but you you would set fire to your your <laughs> microwave so don't do that uh but your your turkey will cook uh, in the oven, much slower than in the microwave, so it allows the the skin to cook much longer than the meat on the inside, because you're you're not penetrating the food at all. It's all the heat that cooks the the turkey has to make its way from the the outer layer of the turkey all the way down to the inside through conduction, mm-hmm. rather than this radio radiative microwave heating that that microwaves will cook it by. Did you say that there, there's a fan in the microwave, not for cooling, but to spread electrons about? Or what, um, what it uh, that's called a stirrer fan, and is it made of? Plastic? It's located it- at. It's made of metal. It's located at the top of the fan or at the top of the microwave, uh, above your food, and it is designed just to reflect the microwaves in a different pattern. Okay. So that way, the Do microwaves. All microwaves have that? No, not all of them. Most of the time, they'll just have a turntable. Okay. Uh, but certain microwaves do have a stirrer fan, and that allows your the, the nodes and anodes inside the microwave to change position, mm. so you don't need to turn the food. Instead, you can just reflect the microwaves in a different pattern. Okay. Would the stirrer fan go in the opposite direction of the turntable? I mean, I don't think it matters. Well, then, if it went the same direction, it doesn't actually it, stir the the microwaves; it reflects oh, okay. them, but in, in a different, different pattern. But it, then, it basically, it would make no. Okay, 
doesn't make a circle <laughs> kind of having them spinning around basically no could a microwave okay. have two turntables and a magnetron rick -a, rick -a, rick -a. <laughs> <laughs> technically yes <laughs> sure why not <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and my most my most important question uh is could could you make a microwave gun yes you absolutely yes. you could make a microwave gun i've actually seen like some weird documentary like thing where they actually made microwave guns specifically because it was on crop circles which makes no sense, but they were trying to get a certain thing that supposedly happens in like to the make plants. Fake crop circles. Yes, <laughs> supposedly like well, most the crop actual. Crop circles are real, by the right, way. Right, right, right. <laughs> and they want to like you know make real crop circles, right? I want to do that. <laughs> so they made microwave guns. Well, the crop circles are real. They're just not made by aliens. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are all the questions I have. You guys? Yeah, I got a question. When you boil water on a conventional stove, you know, it usually starts bubbling and rolling, right? Mm -hmm. But I've seen that if you put water on a microwave and set it in there for a while, it doesn't necessarily do that. Do you guys do you... know why that is? Uh, so the reason for that is uh, boiling water on a stove will convect, uh, which means the, the water... The, the heat source is underneath the, the stove right. or underneath the water coming from the stove, mm -hmm. uh, which means the bottom of the water will get hot faster than the top oh, of the water. Okay. So you'll get this convection mm -hmm. movement going on in the water, whereas in a microwave, the, the water will heat fairly evenly throughout the entire container. Mm -hmm. uh, the outside will heat more than the inside, but... Usually, even the top would heat more than the the bottom because the microwave is coming from the, the the microwaves are coming from the top of the the microwave. Usually, this is actually kind of an issue with microwaving water because you can actually superheat the water, which which means you're heating it at least a little bit above the boiling point. Problem is, when you open the microwave, as soon as you disturb that water, it immediately boils. And it, it will can nucleate. It will nucleate. Which means you're giving it a point where it can start boiling, and then that process creates a chain reaction of the, the molecules around it boiling. So it would happen if, say, you put a, a mug of distilled water in the microwave, and you microwaved it to above its normal boiling point, and then you were to throw a, a bag of tea in there, it would immediately, or it could immediately boil and spray all over you and hurt you very badly so don't microwave distilled water you want to microwave water Regular that has water some impurities so probably has some boil. ions that are something yeah. in it that will allow it to to boil but if, if yeah. you did microwave distilled water uh and say somebody else got hurt would it look like an accident <laughs> <laughs> we do not condone using superheated water to hurt people <laughs> Any more questions? So why do marshmallows blow up in microwaves? Why do you mm. stick them in there? Do you mean mm. blow up or do you mean inflate? Because I've seen they them like have... they explode. They explode um, so <laughs> marshmallows and, and eggs will do that too. Yeah. Uh, and popcorn. But you want popcorn to explode actually. So what's going on is mm. the water content inside of those things is trapped inside little pockets inside them. Uh, in the popcorn, it's in the center of the kernel. And that water will, due to the microwaves, heat up and turn to steam. And then you basically have a, a pressure bomb. You have this gas that, you have a liquid that turns into gas inside of a contained vessel, and that will cause an explosion of that vessel, which in popcorn gives us that nice signature pop, and in eggs will make your microwave very messy, <laughs> and marshmallows as well. I don't think I've ever seen a marshmallow explode. I've seen them they like inflate. They haven't microwaved them long enough. Probably, yeah. Well, I try not to make them explode. What's the why through? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do you hear that music? 
No, I don't hear any music. Is there you don't music? hear that music that I'm going to add in post? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, yes, now I hear it, because this is post. And why did I miss it before? Do you know what that music means? No, I don't. What does it mean, Hunter? It means we have to admit that we're only human. Oh, do we have to? We do. Oh. Whoops, I fucked up. This will be our first. Time to meet the waifu. Whoops, this'll, I fucked up. This will be our first waifu, because this is our waifu. second episode. Also, I believe that's the first fuck in the series. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah that's why we have time, the explicit tag. We have explicit <laughs> tag. <laughs> yes. So God forbid the children hear the word fuck. That's right. <laughs> so it looks like on this uh, this episode of Waifu, you have number one. I made the first fuck up. Uh, when I was going over the pronunciation of the uh, predecessor to GPS uh, from the UK called G... I pronounced it gee, and I was wrong. Oh. I don't know why I didn't just look up a video about it to learn its pronunciation, but that's what I did after we recorded the podcast, and I was wrong. It is G. But it's still not GIF. It is pronounced <laughs> GIF. That's right. You'll still die if you call it GIF. <laughs> capacitor will come into your house with that knife while you're asleep. Yeah. Right. So, number two, I put it under waifu. I don't know if we, well, yeah, it actually was actually a waifu. Um, but if we were going to put it in anyways as a clarification. Uh, we mentioned that I, I ran, captured one of our UAVs. Uh, and, and a UAV again is? Unmanned un- aerial vehicle. Unmanned aerial vehicle as our in very other words, smart. a drone. <laughs> yes, a drone. I think we said drone in the last one. I believe we did, yeah. Yeah. So I, I got some more information on what exactly happened. And uh, so December 4th, 2011, it was a Lockheed Martin RQ-170 drone, which I don't know if you, if our listeners and our audience knows what this is, but it it's not like the Predator drones that, that we know, like they're very common and well-known, but this one actually looks like a small... Was it like B-2 bomber, the single wing kind of design? Uh, but instead of black, it's white, which is weird. And it's much, much smaller. Uh, but that's what it was. And apparently it was top secret. And like nobody knew about it until this uh, happened. Um, it was a CIA drone, uh, not the U.S. military. Uh, and apparently the CIA basically lost control of it near the Iran border when flying it in Afghanistan. Uh, and Iran claimed that they took it down. Now, it's, I thought, and I said in the last episode, that I thought it was G- GPS spoofing or jamming that we used to take it down. Apparently, uh, according to some American aeronautical engineers, uh, that drone does not actually use GPS or not as a primary means of lo- locating itself. It uses an inertial navigation system. Um, so it was not GPS, uh, spoofing or jamming. Uh, it's actually unclear exactly what happened if Iran actually had something to do with taking it down or if it was just a glitch in the drone. For some reason, the U.S. government and the CIA is not talking. I don't know why. (laughs) But yeah, so whoops, I fucked up. (laughs) But I fixed it. <laughs> uh, do we have any? I, that's all we have listed. Was there anything else uh, you wanted to mention? Uh, not or now, but I'm sure we'll we find about? more okay. fuck ups. Yeah, so this is not limited to just the episode before. It's if we find out yep. later, we, we can still come back to even older episodes. We would like to, to give only correct information, but we're only human, so we're going to make fuck ups. And if you catch yeah. one, Feel free to email us at svskeptics at gmail.com. Uh, that will do it for this episode. That thank you, awesome. Matt. Thank you, Hunter. And we want to thank Cyber SDF for letting us use their song Welcome and their song Mellow Acid as the intro and outro, and Blue Wave Theory for letting us use their song 900 Turbo as our waifu music. <laughs> 
And I hope you are all paying attention because this will all be on the test. Encyclopedia Podcastica is a production of the Silicon Valley Skeptics, an organization dedicated to promoting science and critical thinking. You can find us on Twitter at SB Skeptics or Facebook at facebook.com slash sbskeptics. You can contact us at svskeptics at gmail.com. If you like the show, please rate us on iTunes.